Hey guys, I would like to start this video with an apology. I am out of allergy medication, so that's why I sound horribly, horribly ill. Welcome to today's video. Today we are drawing my favorite OC of all time, Al Frontera. She is very heavily visually based off of peacocks, and maybe in the future you will see some influences of Metaton's personality, like from Undertale. Uh, she's a non-binary lesbian that I kind of inject into all of my stories, whether that be a fanfiction or an original concept of mine. Um, before we really get into it, um, I tend to flip back and forth between she and they pronouns, so I guess both of them are fine for this character, and her name is just Spanish for at the border. And I thought that would be a cute nod to the gender non-conforming nature of their character. As for the visual design, peoples are my favorite birds. And the sexual dimorphism between the males and females I think is very interesting. I liked the idea of masculinity being presented in a way that is showy and theatrical and flashy with your feminine counterpart being more uh, subdued and neutral toned. And I'll go over the influences of the peahen design whenever I draw Princess Hen, but right now I'm more focused on Al's design. I've had this idea for a suit for over a year, and when I was bouncing it around in my head, um, I was considering the feathers to be like attached to a waistcoat or a um, and just have like a mechanism that would display the feathers much like an actual peacock so you would like pull a string or something and the feathers would expand or maybe it was just a mechanical piece of clothing that could do that on its own but instead I I went a little more simple I chose the fancy collar and um, that may imply that they're always flirting and showing off and there's just a really theatrical flirty character here with a lot of cockiness a lot of peacockiness I forgot a little detail in Al's face whenever I finish this um, she normally has a winged eyeliner that better resembles the eyes of an actual peacock because there's a uh, sort of a white strip that looks like winged eyeliner with black lines that surround it. It looks really cool. And it's a pretty small detail overall. Um, it's just something I'll have to remember for the future. Actually drawing Al digitally for the first time, I had to think about elements of the design that I didn't have to consider before. Like the eye makeup thing. Normally her face is too small for me to actually um, put any sort of makeup on the character and something I'll have to include in a better reference later with actual notes written out. In addition to that I keep changing the uh, the details of the suit because sometimes it's like a cardigan, sometimes it's like a dandy English waistcoat. It's just never the same every time I do it and the colors keep changing even though it's the same every time because I keep trying to figure out where I want to put the uh, the black and white stripey feathers that the peacock body tends to have you normally don't see it except on like full picture images of a peacock there's like a black and white uh, sort of speckled area and most people don't think of that part but I wanted to include it somewhere so that keeps changing, and um, now that I have digital references, the lines are much more clean, and I'll just have a more clear reference for them in the future. Like I said earlier, I've written them into several stories of mine. Uh, I haven't finished any of them, to be f to be quite honest. Um, none of them are finished, but I I would love to build a legitimate fantasy world around this character in particular. Um, until their own universe is fleshed out, which is still very much in production. Lots of um, red tape going on there. I am just going to continue throwing 
concepts and fan fictions into the wild because I love this character so much. Uh, one of the stories that I thought of as an original was like a fetch quest sort of thing where Al had to collect a bunch of keys to unlock the castle that the princess was held in. And that was, that was very Paper Mario, and so it just didn't really stick as an original concept to me. And don't get me wrong, I love Paper Mario, it's just that my story was too close to their storylines for the concepts to read as uh, something original and personal to me. So I kind of had to scrap that one. I, I didn't really connect with the characters that I made up for it. There was just something missing there, and I liked the idea of the character having the hub world be a, a bar, and then that's where they meet all of these zany characters and go on adventures with them in order to find the princess, but yeah, it was, it was very Paper Mario, and I just didn't want, I just didn't connect with it. And then the next story that I liked a lot better, that I still think has potential, is a um, sort of a Wild West type of story. Um, I would have to do a little more thinking with it than what I have so far. At first it was going to be just another Rescue of the Princess story, but that's not what I want. I don't want that. I want a story where Al Frontera and Princess Hen work together to defeat a goal, and this was just another damsel in distress, and that's not what I wanted. So maybe if I focused more on stories about just like teamwork as inspiration, maybe I would get to where I wanted to go. But the concept of this Wild West story was that Al is a cowhand who is just very androgynous and people keep asking if they're a boy or a girl and they're tired of the rumors, tired of all of the negative aspects of living in a small rural area. So they catch wind of this story about a witch. They catch story about this witch who kills and eats men and scars women into never speaking ever again and this witch is actually Princess Hen and the rumors were largely false it, the story had a lot of themes about spreading rumors and what that's like as a gay person is you can't take a man's opinion of a woman <laughs> because how it was written the rumor is that she kills men but they act aggressively towards her so she kills them out of self-defense and the reason that women are so scared of saying what happened to them is that they slept with her <laughs> so of course you can't tell your husband that you did that so you just sort of play it off like you're terrified and go back to your life so that that would be a fun concept where there are rumors that that she kills people and scares them but she's actually just being a lesbian and minding her own business so Al uh, chases this story and then finds out for herself that she's just a nice uh, pretty witch who does not mean anyone harm and so of course they fall in love but there's a catch the reason that she's like out in the middle of nowhere where people are hunting her is because there is a rival witch that lives in town who just sort of wants her to suffer so she cursed the princess into staying in this shack and everyone has this terrible idea of her and this rival is like the wife of the sheriff and the only way to break the curse is for the this rival to undo the spell herself or die so because it's a wild west story uh, there's a large shootout and then there's a lot of galloping off into the sunset together and that's what I got <laughs> I really like that story and I think there is uh, a lot of potential to build something out of it but right now it's just um, 
is still kind of a nebulous concept that I still have to play with. So until there is a fully fleshed out universe, uh, she's just going to have to be a time traveler where she falls in love with the same woman no matter what timeline. And like I said, there were a couple of fan fictions. I had a I had a Pokemon concept where it was similar to the Wild West story. Go figure. Um, I had an XCOM 2 idea. I still have... The thing about XCOM 2 is that you're able to build the characters and put them in a pool so that they show up in the story. And that's really fun because you can just sort of play with them again. Because the first one, you uh, you had to remake that same character every time, and maybe on um, maybe if you got XCOM One off of Steam, you could have gotten a mod for that. But I played it on PlayStation Three, so I did I did not have any such luck. So I play XCOM Two a lot, even though I think I like the first one better. Sorry, I kind of went off on a tangent. So. <laughs> I have Al as a character in my character pool, and Princess Hen as well. I generally put Al in a um, in either a a grenadier class or the ranger class. Normally, just something brash and explosive. And then Princess Hen is always a psi operative. And that's that for all of my fan fictions. I have not made a um, a Minecraft fan fiction of these characters. Surprisingly, I I don't know. Hmm. Maybe maybe I can have something there at some point. J.K. I'm not gonna draw. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do a, a Minecraft fan art of these two. That's silly. And one last thing about the. Um, character design, I think, is, um, I have this idea for a Phoenix version of the design. I would really like to see this exact outfit in red and gold, as opposed to the navy and silver that I have here. I think it would be really fun to poke fun at the barrier gaze trope, but instead she's just reborn in a new outfit and she's like oh well navy's out of season anyway <laughs> i think that would be really fun it would turn the barrier gaze trope on its head and it would just sort of poke fun at maybe not poke fun but it would be reassuring to gay readers who are tired of this trope to uh see that the gay character survives and uh, make something amazing out of it. Also, it would look really badass as an outfit. Or maybe, yeah, she could come back as evil. Yeah, they could rise up. Al could rise up out of the ashes and turn into an evil version of themselves. That would also be a fun concept to play with. I don't know, I think, I think that's about it for my designs and my ideas. I will be posting this image on my blog, and I will also be writing future concepts in the future. <laughs> but yeah, if you have any ideas for a storyline for Al, I would love to hear it, um, because I really like this character, and I really like hanging out with her, and next week I will show you a drawing of Princess Hen. She is also very fun to draw, I think. She's a big diva. <laughs> One thing that needs to always be remembered about Al is that she is short. That's a running thing, is that Al Frontera is a short character. That cannot be changed. Do not ever draw fan art of Al Frontera being tall. That is not part of the character design and I will fire you. Thank you guys so much for watching, and tune in next week for Princess Henrietta, and I will see you there. Thank you, and goodbye.